Australia is home to many forest lands and national parks. One of the most important national parks in the northern part of the continent is the Kakaru National Park. It is home to a huge variety of animals, birds and plants. Now just like this national park, there is other important forest lands that are found in the eastern highland region of the continent. Eastern highlands are the another important physical feature of the continent of Australia. So in our previous lesson we learnt about the Great Western Plateau and the Central Lowlands of the continent. Another important geographical feature of the continent that is the Eastern Highlands. So the Eastern Highlands stands along the eastern coast of the continent like an arc. So the Eastern Highlands along the eastern coast of the continent is in the shape of an arc and is also known as the Great Dividing Range. It stretches from Cape York Peninsula in the north to Tasmania in the south. So this is the extent of the eastern highlands and they lie right next to the central lowlands of the continent. Well, the eastern highlands are more rugged and have higher peaks in the southern portion of the continent. And here they form the highest mountain ranges of the continent that is the Australian Alps. So Australian Alps are what can be found in the southern portion of the eastern highlands. They have rugged high cliffs and high peaks that are mostly covered in snow almost throughout the year. Now the Australian Alps are one of the highest mountain ranges of the continent of Australia and is a part of the Eastern Highland region. It is located in the southeastern part of the continent and consists of some of the highest peaks of the continent. The Australian Alps experiences rain, hail, sleet, snow, frost, strong winds and low temperatures especially during the winter and spring season. So this particular region or the Australian Alps experiences a mountain type of climate with no dry season and a good annual precipitation in the form of snow, sleet, frost, especially during winter and spring season. However, during summers, the temperatures are above 30 degrees Celsius and summers are usually very mild. So the summer months are dry and temperatures rise above 30 degrees Celsius but the nights are cool. So in this region the nights though are cool the daytime temperature rises above 30 degrees Celsius and unlike the winter season the summer season is mostly dry. So the Australian Alps that receives huge amount of precipitation in the form of snow, sleet, frost and have low temperatures during winter and spring season are mostly covered by snow almost throughout the year. Now in the Australian Alps, the highest peak is Mount Kosciuszko. Now Mount Kosciuszko is the highest peak in the Australian Alps with an altitude of 2,228 meters. So this here is the highest peak of the Australian Alps. Besides those beautiful Australian Alps, the beauty of the Eastern Highlands is uncomparable. The Eastern Highlands comprises of many important mineral resources like gold, copper, tin, natural gas and mineral oils. The main parts of the system comprises of the Australian Alps as we just saw. Along with that we have New England Range and also the Blue Mountains. The eucalyptus oil droplets mixes with the water vapor and dust particles giving out short wavelength rays of light that are predominantly blue in color and so these mountains are known as blue mountains. So there we saw how beautiful the eastern highland region is along with such unique geological formations and also is home to some important mineral resources. Now besides that, we have two major rivers of Australia originating from the Eastern Highlands. Here we are referring to River Murray and River Darling. 
while river murray is a perennial river providing continuous water supply to the region here river darling is the longest river of australia also helping in the generation of hydroelectricity so many rivers originate in the eastern highlands which provide drinking water to millions and help in the generation of hydroelectricity and out of all those rivers two most important ones are river murray and river darling so we just saw how like the kakaro national park the eastern highlands is home to many forests and geological formations there have been many efforts made towards saving these forests that are present in the eastern highland region and also the different animals and different birds and vegetation that are prone to frequent wildfires and bushfires so a lot has been done to take care and protect these beautiful creatures so that was a clear glance about the third major physical division of australia that is the eastern highlands now finally we come to another important major physical division of australia that is the coastal lowlands so we can clearly see on the map that the coastal lowlands are a narrow stretch of plain along the coast of the continent in the eastern western and southern portion so these coastal lowlands play a very important role because they provide grounds for trade and commerce and are also home to some unique animals and vegetation now it is the coastal lowlands of australia that is home to the largest limestone plain landscape of the world what exactly are we talking about well we are referring to the nullarbor plain the nullarbor plain is australia's icon and is the world's largest limestone plain landscape now what exactly do we mean by limestone plain well limestone is a type of sedimentary rock which has been formed many many years ago due to the layering of fossil fuels so this limestone plain is also a result of the layering of fossil fuels over millions of years which due to heat and pressure has resulted in the formation of these limestone plains so the nullarbor plain which is the largest limestone plain in the world is a part of the coastal lowlands of australia and is often regarded as an australian icon So here we have two images that shows us the Nullarbor plain. So the coastal plains in the southern part of the continent that is right here is regarded as the Nullarbor plain. So Nullarbor plain is just the name of the coastal plains in the southern portion of the continent and as we read it is the largest limestone plain on earth. Now before we proceed with the lesson could you help me answer this question what is the coastal plain referred to as in the southern part of the continent is it darling downs or nullarbor plain or omeo plains well the correct answer is nullarbor plain so the coastal plains of the southern part of the continent is known as the nullarbor plain Now through the Nullarbor plain we have the longest stretch of straight road in the world well the Erie highway across the Nullarbor plain is the longest stretch of straight road in Australia and one of the longest in the world so here we can see that the Erie highway extends from Norseman in western Australia to Port Augusta in South Australia across the Nullarbor plain and this is one of the longest of its kind in the world Now after looking at one of the longest stretch of straight road in the world let's see the planet's largest living structure we are talking about the great barrier reef the great barrier reef is home to millions of species and living creatures it has been compared to a living city because it is home to such huge variety of marine creatures and plants this particular reef or the great barrier reef is the largest of its kind in the world and is home to more than 2000 islands clays and coral reefs 
Now the Great Barrier Reef, as you can see on the images, is not only a barrier by its name, but also by its nature. Why so? Because the Great Barrier Reef that is present off the coast of Australia acts as a barrier or a shield against tsunamis. It helps in reducing the effect of tsunamis that hits the coast of Australia. So it acts as a barrier against such natural disasters. Other than that, this barrier is so large that it can be seen from the space too. So here is an image that shows how the Great Barrier Reef along the coast of Australia can be seen even from the space. So the Great Barrier Reef is the largest coral reef in the world and it stretches along the northeastern coast of Australia for a distance of 2300 kilometers. So stretching over 2300 kilometers, the Great Barrier Reef is located along the northeastern coast of Australia. Now the questions that might be troubling you now is that what exactly is a coral reef or why exactly do we call it the Great Barrier Reef? Well, to understand that, we must clearly understand what exactly are corals. So corals are tiny living organisms found in seas and oceans. So here is an image of corals. These are tiny living organisms found in large water bodies like seas and oceans. Other than that, they are brightly colored and can only survive in warm, shallow waters. So these corals that have such beautiful colors can only survive in warm waters and shallow waters. So in deep waters, they won't be able to survive because of the lack of oxygen. Other than that, there are silt deposits in the lower portions of the water body that might clog the pores of these corals and therefore they could die. So these corals that are brightly colored are tiny living organisms found in oceans and seas and they're mostly found in shallow waters. So the Great Barrier Reef, which is the largest living structure on Earth, is also a collection of millions of such corals that has been converted into reefs. Now what exactly is a coral reef? Well, these tiny living organisms leave out calcium carbonate. So after they die, the skeletal remains of these tiny living organisms get hardened to form what is known as reefs or coral reefs. So the Great Barrier Reef was also formed like this. So a coral reef is an underwater ecosystem characterized by reef building corals. So in the Great Barrier Reef, we also have millions of such corals that has formed reefs and so it is known as the Great Barrier Reef. So these brightly colored corals and millions of creatures that is present in the Great Barrier Reef has made it a tourist paradise. So the Great Barrier Reef is a tourist paradise because of its colorful corals and beautiful marine life. It is also one of the best scuba diving destinations in the world. So we can see in these pictures how these beautiful, colorful creatures and the colorful corals make the Great Barrier Reef a tourist paradise. Other than that, people from all across the globe come to spend their vacation in Australia and they definitely don't miss a chance to visit this Great Barrier Reef and experience scuba diving in this reef. Now because of how unique this living structure is, the Great Barrier Reef was declared as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in the year 1981. But unfortunately, due to over-exploitation and various human activities, the Great Barrier Reef is now under a huge threat. It is believed that 93% of the corals has already been bleached due to human activities. So human activities has led to rising temperatures and increase in global warming. Due to rise in temperature, the coral reefs have bleached out or they have lost their colors and are completely dead. 
This is because, as we have already learned, the favorable conditions for the survival of these corals is the presence of warm water. But due to rise in temperature and global warming, the temperature of the water bodies have also increased to a huge extent, leading to unfavorable or unsuitable conditions for the survival of these corals. That has led to the bleaching of these corals. And studies show that almost 93% of the corals in the Great Barrier Reef is already bleached. So it's high time that we check on our activities and not lose such nature's gift that has been given to us. Now besides the Great Barrier Reef, another very significant geographical feature of the continent is the Rift Valley. So the Rift Valley is one of the most favorite tourist attractions in the Arkalu Wildlife Sanctuary in the southern part of the continent. This particular sanctuary is home to unique animals and birds and it is present in the Rift Valley of Australia. Now, what exactly do we mean by a Rift Valley? Well, a Rift Valley is a lowland region that forms where the Earth's tectonic plates move apart or rift. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, when the Earth's tectonic plates that are continuously in motion rift away or move away from each other, the land in the center subsides down, forming a low land region, and this is what is known as rift valleys. So rift valleys usually are surrounded by steep rugged cliffs that are a characteristics of these rift valleys. So this is what is a rift valley and here is an image of such rift valley. In Australia too we have an important rift valley system. So in the southern portion of the continent we have the rift valley of Australia and in this we have a very important basin that is the Adelaide Geosyncline. So the Adelaide Geosyncline is a super basin or a large basin that has been formed in association with the Rift Valley in the southern portion of the continent. And that is why this particular basin is also called a Rift Valley Basin. Right? And it is present in the southeastern part of the continent as we can see in the map. Now Adelaide Geosyncline extends from Lake Erie in the north to the Spencer Gulf in the south and it lies between the Western Plateau region and the Murray-Darling Basin. Now other than that, Lake Erie, Lake Torrens and the Spencer Gulf are lower parts of Adelaide Geosyncline or this particular Rift Valley Basin that has been filled up by water either due to rainfall or due to seawater. Now Lake Torrens, that is one of the lower portions of Adelaide Geosyncline or the Rift Valley Basin is a Rift Valley Salt Lake in Southern Australia. So we can see that this particular lake, that is Lake Torrens, is a Rift Valley Lake in the southern part of the continent. And here are images or aerial views of the Lake Torrens region. So in this lesson, we were able to understand that the continent of Australia has unique geological formations like rift valleys, rift valley basins and also many important forests that are found in the Eastern Highland region. We looked in details into two major geographical features of the continent that is the Eastern Highlands and the coastal plains and we learned how unique they are in their own cells. In our next lesson, we'll do a case study of one of the most important commercial activities of the continent, that is sheep rearing. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one-to-one -one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5,000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like Playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.